Hi, this is Ryan Vincent Logson, the director of Agony, and you're listening to the iWalter podcast. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird brain. It's a plane. It's iWalter. iWalter. Yes, it's I, Walter, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I, Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild-mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of I, Walter. Yes, everyone, this is Walter, Walter in Toronto, um, from I, Walter. You know what? What day is it? It's Monday now. And I actually didn't want, want to stay up late because I actually want to get some errands, things done be, before tomorrow. I gotta, wow, I got everything all over the place tonight. I'm not used to doing shows like I used to. It, uh, I'm out of breath, too, running around. Uh, let's see. Well, the time is 12.29 a.m. It is Monday, March 20th, so it's only like, what, a little over a week left. It's hard to believe this week has gone so fast, has pretty much this week, this whole, this week hasn't even started yet. This month has, you know, flew. This whole year already is starting to fly. I don't know. Anyway, um, one thing I just want to get out of the way really quickly, I'm going to let you know now, it's going to be a rather lengthy segment I'm going to play or a sound bite, whatever you want to call it, because it's a good 15 minutes. Uh, it's actually 13, but I'm just going to call it, uh, it's a Rush Limbaugh link from second hour on Friday that was just so good. I liked it so much that I decided, you know what, this is just too good to not play the whole segment, you know, so I'm going to play everything for the, like a segment of 15 minutes, which believe it or not, you won't believe this, but uh, 15 minutes for Rush Limbaugh is pretty much, I, th- I would say about a good half hour of his show because the rest is all commercials, but you're not going to hear commercials. You might hear him say like, break time and stuff like that. That was just too good um, to let go. It was on my favorite subject of complaining about. So obviously, I'm going to make sure to play all that. Um, it was kind of funny, by the way, because I, well, it wasn't funny at first, but I actually messed up my computer once again, and it was like, because I got a new hard drive, and I, I learned the hard way, hard way, you know, hard way, it's I'm trying to make a joke, and I can't, but it's seriously, I, I learned the uh, hard way that I got this external hard drive, an 8 terabyte. I have two now. So I have 16 terabytes of external hard drive space, one terabyte on my Mac Pro. And it was like, okay, I put it on, and it was trying to convince me that I should use the software. It's a Seagate hard drive. I love Seagate, so I've never really had any issues, and I couldn't understand. This was the first time this would have happened. So I hook up this Seagate, and... You know, I, I like figured I got it working properly. And, and lo and behold, though, what happens is it um, it says, oh, yeah, it recommends you put their software on for the hard drives. It's like, why do you need software for hard drives? I've never heard of such a thing. Anyway, you just basically format it for whatever kind of uh, computer you have and what kind of operating system. And then it's said and done. So but anyway, the software screwed up my system. I actually lost six terabytes of information it's nothing that great so i'm you know not too terribly upset but at the same time a little bit pissed off a friend helped me for hours to one night my one friend rich and that's one of the things i had to mention um really great guy he you know the guy does a lot for me on computer stuff and taught me everything i know about computers so that was really cool So anyway, um, yeah, the computer got really screwed up. Anyway, one thing I had to mention, I was over his house and we were talking, and he's got like two cats, two kittens that are really big now. Two kittens, two boys, they're from the same litter, and then a dog. Well, 
the cat, for some reason, you know, it's getting in its teen year, so to speak. The one kitten is they got they had gotten really big really quickly. So the one cat was getting really uh, frisky last night, really horny. So he started to um, hump his brother. So but like fucking. Yeah. So that's pretty much what it was, you know. He started, you know, jumping on top, and they're both boys. So it was like it kind of made me think about, you know, hey, is that true? Oh, excuse me for a minute. I'm trying to pull this cable around. You know, do you believe that now with this? I don't know what to think. Uh, with, you know, gay, being gay and stuff is a natural thing. Well, I don't know because after seeing the, both these animals, these cats, um, it had nothing to do with the cats, you know, because they were both males. So give me a second. It is not like being cooperative like the cable. Of course it wouldn't because, God, that would make too much sense. Something working for me properly. So, yeah, the, the thing is, though, it has nothing to do. I, I don't know. I'm beginning to believe now that being gay is not. Anything besides a socially learned thing. I hate to say this. I know there's going to be people out there who are going to dis- totally disagree with me. They're also going to disagree with that whole thing. I'm going to play with Rush. But it's absolutely true, though. It is absolutely... No, I'm, what am I saying? I don't know if it's true. How's that? I do not know if it's true, but I'm beginning to leave it. Do you think those cats were like... That cat was born homosexual? Because I even made the joke from a friend. I said, well, one thing. I said, your cats are, are doing some like incestuous type behavior and two they must be gay because you know one is the sender and the other one's the receiver or the pitcher and the and the catcher whatever you want to call it and i was making just every joke i could i even said nasty pictures of cats humping each other and it was just because i was having too much fun with it. i never saw that before and the cat would not give up the cat just continuously started humping its brother so it's his brother so it it didn't even stop there. This cat was so horny. It was like, yeah, I gotta we gotta get these cats fixed. But you know, it's gonna cost one hundred and fifty dollars a piece. It's like that's a lot of money for freaking cats. I mean, I love cats, but that, that's when you gotta get rid of them. Almost that's too expensive. Um, and you know, it's horrible they, what they gotta go through. I think so. Um, I don't think men would like to be cat. Well, they are in our society. We are castrated but i mean seriously you really don't want to be castrated like these animals have to be just so they won't piss on everything and cats will and the males will piss when they get really you know really um aggressively horny so um yeah so the cat was also attacking this dog it was like a pug and the poor dog didn't know what to do like the cat was just taking it out on the dog it's like i'm freaking horny i'm gonna smack you around like a bitch so it was, yeah, it was kind of interesting. It was funny. And I just, I'm not used to that. I've, you know, I've ha- we had a cat in the past, but the cat was just so messed up in the head that we didn't have it too long before we had to get rid of it, I guess, or got hit by a car, actually. So anyway, um, yeah, so there was that. Um, I actually thought that was entertaining. Um, I do got some stories, but you know what? This is going to take a long segment of the show. That's why, again... I decided to call this segment um, because it, it's more than like ten second sound bite. It's more than a two minute sound bite. It's liter. It's basically the second hour of Russia's show, and I don't think people are going to appreciate this. I don't know if it's feasible. Can I do that? I don't know. I just hey, you know, I'm acknowledging what Rush said by putting this on my podcast. I mean, basically nobody listens to me anyhow, except my one friend Matt. Once in a well, I guess he says he listens to Omar. All Matt, you said you do, but again, I'm just giving you, um, you know, kind of. I'm going to put it in the title. It will be in the title of 15 minutes of Rush because what I basically mean, it's 15 minutes of his show. Take it or leave it, but it's coming from somebody who has a lot more credibility than I do. That's why I'm going to play it. I think I should do it now, and then I'm just going to kind of read through the stories and make it a short night. So. I'm not up until 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning, 7 in the morning, like I've been. So, you know what? I'll do that now. So, here we go. I'm, I um, It was a caller who actually got him 
started up, and for a good 15 minutes, he just went off on this. I think even through commercial breaks, I'm not sure. So I myself might listen to it. I am going to listen to it while I, you know, I'm going to plug it in my show, and let you listen to it. I'm going to listen to it myself. Uh, whoever listens to it, Matt, give me some feedback. So I, I kind, of, kind of would be interested to hear what you think of that. And here we go. It's the Rush Limbaugh from this past Friday. People have been patiently waiting. It is Open Line Friday. We go to my adopted hometown, Sacramento, California. This is Robbie. Great to have you. How are you doing? Hi, Russ Limbaugh. Great. Um, I'm calling about these women who have been protesting against Trump, and in particular about something that you quoted several times last week that I found very disturbing as a woman. You quoted Kate Blanchett as saying that her moral compass was in her vagina. What if a man said that his moral compass was in his sexual organ? What if a man said that his moral compass was in a sexual pleasure center? People would say he was a pig. They would say he was justifying sexual assault and rape and molestation. And if women want a level playing field... Don't they need to play by the same rules? They don't want a level playing field at all. And your point, I have to tell you, you are, that is brilliant. That is the kind of analogy that everybody can understand. I really applaud you. The only problem with it is, is that the women you're talking about already think men are pigs. (laughs) You're probably right about that. But that is an excellent point. Can you imagine if some guy, let, let's say, take your pick, uh, Mel Gibson. Let's pick an actor. Mel Gibson, who they already hate, right? Or Schwarzenegger. Right. Have Arnie go out there. I will be back. My moral center is in my penis. Can you imagine what they would say? It would be so offensive. But a woman can say it, and it's fine. And people applaud it. Oh, I know. It is It is. It is incredibly double state. You know, you have reminded me. I've got another story here that I was... It, it's, in, it's in a portion of the stack here that if I need it, I'll get to it. It's not something that I had front and center. But since you've called, it's a story in the New York Times. It's a column by Thomas B. Edsel. Now, Thomas B. Edsel is a political columnist. And this is the guy who wrote in the Times in November of 2011 how the Democrats were going to abandon white working men as a voting bloc. That's that's who this guy is. Robbie, thanks for the call. I, I, I really. What, what part of Sacramento do you live in? I live out near Elk Grove. Oh, okay, Elk Grove. There's an Apple uh, distribution center out there. There is a very large one. Absolutely. Okay. How long have you lived there? I've. I have lived here all my life, well, since I was three, and I have been listening to you since the 1980s. That would be, that makes you a lifer. Yeah, I started yeah, there. I am a lifer. <laughs> yeah, I started there, uh, it was October of 1984, and that was my break. Sacramento, California was my professional break. Well, I'm able, part of the reason I'm able to think and articulate the things that I can is because I've been a student of yours for so long. So thank you for your teaching. Well, oh, God bless you. Thank you. I, re- I, I never take any of that for granted. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Robbie. This piece, Thomas B. Edsel, is entitled The Increasing Significance of the Decline of Men. In other words, this decline in men ain't a good thing. And I frankly was stunned to see that this appeared in the New York Times by a writer who is a card-carrying leftist. So I said, okay, what's this? There's got to be some catch to this because this is not something... The New York Times would find a problem with. The New York Times is is popular by people who think not only is the United States the problem in the world, it is so because of the male population. So here are some, um, uh, there's a pull quote. What does all this suggest? First, there are irreversible changes in the workplace, particularly the rise of jobs. 
requiring social skills that will continue to make it hard for men who lack them. Second, male children suffer more from restricted or non-existent parental leave policies and contemporary child care arrangements, as well as from growing up in single-parent households. In other words, we finally got an acknowledgement here that single-parent households are maybe a problem, but primarily for the men or the little boys, and that we need to fix this with expanded parental leave. So there's the, the liberalism in this. But this, this piece... Uh, portrays men as a as as victims, and I just don't think that real men consider themselves victims and don't want to be considered victims. Do not want to be victims and don't want to be thought of as victims. Most people, a lot of people, do want to be victims. It's easy. It's an excuse for not doing anything. An excuse for failing. Uh, Being a victim means somebody else is responsible for everything going wrong in your life. So the the Democrats love plugging as many people as they can into into victim status. But here's how it uh, here's how it starts. In 2016, 95.8% of Fortune 500 CEOs were male. And so were 348 of the Forbes 400 of the 260 people. On the Forbes list described as self-made, 250 were men. Wealth and the ability to generate more wealth must still be considered a reliable proxy for power. But at the other end of the scale, men of all races and ethnicities are dropping out of the workforce. They're abusing opioids. They're falling behind women in both college attendance and graduation rates. Since 2000, wage inequality has grown more among men than among women. And there's some stupid chart here from the Economic Policy Institute to illustrate it. For many men without college degrees, the scaffolding that underpinned their fathers' lives has been torn down. David Legey, an emeritus professor of political science at Notre Dame, wrote me by email. This is Thomas B. Edsel of the Times writing. He said, The institutions that men knew to process authoritatively the economic and social changes they faced in earlier times are gone or undermined. The union, the Catholic Church, the industrial bar with co-workers, as in go-get-a-drink bar, the compliant wife, all those things that used to make men men, the union, the church, the bar with... Archie Bunker sitting that compliant women has been replaced. And what's replaced it is an unvetted information technology that yields little truth or comfort and nurtures enemy and anger. He goes on to talk about the the fact that, that men are declining in power, in stature and in wealth, and it's all because all the things that made them bigots and closed-minded mind-numb robots are gone and compliant. We're now women standing up to them. That's something that these, these real guys, they just can't take it. They don't know how to deal with it, and it's causing them to shrink away terms of self-image, stature, and the rest. Anyway, it's convoluted. It's 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 a it's just. But to me, it was a surprising thing to see in the New York Times even have it acknowledge the increasing significance of the decline of men. I mean, if you want to talk about the decline of men, it is happening. Men in great numbers are not going to college. Now, the, I would disagree profoundly with the reasons given in this piece as to why. But I think a lot of this decline of men or the withdrawal of men from various places in our culture is all due to feminism and what it has done to everybody. Because what feminism sought to do when you get right down to it 
Feminism was brought to us by a bunch of angry women whose major grievance and beef was with human nature. And God. And they sought to reverse, undo, change, whatever, basic human nature. Things that we're born with. And it rendered at the peak of the movement, started the current era, late 60s, 70s, 80s, is when this thing was boomeranging. We're still feeling the effects of it now, but it just led everybody to be confused. Nobody knew who they were supposed to be with the opposite sex. Nobody knew how they... Everybody was turned into actors. Everybody was afraid to be who they were, particularly men, because they were taking it every direction. Men are... They're, they're, they're rapists, men are brutes, men are predators, you can't trust men with their own kids, they beat their wives, they get drunk, this was the image that was being created, they're chauvinist pigs and all this, and like everything else, nobody wanted to be thought of that way, so they immediately, men began even subconsciously to behave in ways that would try to indicate that, you know, don't think of me like that, I'm not that. But when the pop culture is, 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 is littered with TV shows that portray men this way and women as the never ending victims, no matter how much power they acquire, no matter how much the decks are stacked in their favor politically, they're still portrayed as weak and victims and not fairly paid and so forth. And you know, all men want to do is get along. That's re- it's, it's not all this feminism garbage about the way men treat women and so forth is so much misunderstood, but it makes sense it's misunderstood because the women responsible for this modern era of feminism themselves were unhappy over the role basic human nature had assigned them. As so they set about trying to change it, everybody becomes actors. Nobody knows what they're supposed to do, with who, how to behave, and therefore nobody was real. And in fact, being real, actually being who you were, if you were a man back in this era, you could get fired. You could lose your kids. Any number of horrible things could happen to you. Now you look at things going on. Who, what, what, what guy wants to go to a college with a bunch of Lena Dunham's there? Why do you want to put up with that? It makes perfect sense to me. That men don't want to put up with this kind of various curriculum changes and some of the stuff you have to take, like women's studies in the early Amazon years, 1700 B.C., B.S. Who cares about any of that? And you've got a professor, Catherine McKinnon, at the University of Michigan, was teaching in the 1990s, women in her class, that all sex is rape, even the sex in marriage. And these young college female co-eds are just soaking it all up and thinking it's gospel and it's new and revelatory and brilliant and so forth. What the hell do you think that's going to do to normal, everyday male-female relationships? And to me, it makes perfect sense that men would matriculate away and out of that, wanting no part of it. Why would they? And if if the way you have to get along with women is to go out and find every book that every feminist has written on rape and become a scholar in it, who wants to do that in order to have some way to relate? These kinds of things, it's not a mystery here. Not to me. Back in just a second. Don't go away. All right. That should have been the fastest 15 minutes of your life because it wasn't me actually talking for that 15 minutes. It was actually Rush Limbaugh. And I again, I hope you enjoyed it. I think I, oh, well, I know I did. What am I saying? I think I did. I did because I actually listened to the whole entire thing, um, as everyone else has or will be, I should say. So, um, yeah, I mean, need I say more? I mean, what am I going to do? Just reiterate what he had just mentioned. Let me just fix my mic. My thing's coming undone. Yeah, I'm coming undone. So, uh, here we go. Anyway, sorry about all these racket. So I'm going to go through these stories because right now I'm actually only at 25 minutes. So and I only, you know, it was like it was a good, I'm going to say 15 minutes. It was actually less than that, but I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Hey, by the way, folks, for the people who may still know who this man was, he was 
I think the person who, in my opinion, started rock and roll, which was Chuck Berry, he actually passed away the other day. It says that he was born on October 18th, 1926, and he had died on March 18th, 2017. He will definitely be missed. Um, I think, the, yeah, he was 80, 90 years old. I apologize. He was 90 years old. Um, but, yeah, Chuck Berry, I think, is one of the few who really did start the movement of what we now consider rock and roll. We would not have rock and roll if it wasn't for this man. So this generation, it seems like they only selectively choose what they wish to know, talk about or remember as far as history on music. So that is one thing I think people should know about, but they really don't. And I think he's a important figure in music as far as when it comes to the music of today's times. Um, I'm going to read through these stories, maybe keep it under an hour if possible. It never really works out that way, uh, but I'm going to try. Um, so anyway, I found this story. You can find these all on my Facebook page. They're actually there now. Woman gets shock of her life when she, uh, snake sni- slithers from her car vent. You know, imagine that, having that happen to like, um, you know, a snake come out of your, your car vent like it got in there. So this was in uh, Venice, Florida. So it's not a shock, but I'd still not like it. Again, I'm just going to kind of rush through these tonight. No puns intended. Um, I found one actually from CT, uh, contributive, no, conservativetribune.com. World famous psych, uh, psychiatrist drops bombshell God. Actually, uh, God discovery atheists will not like this. Basically, there's a segment I found. I, you know, as soon as stuff you got to take with a grain of salt, I'm not saying that, that this is not, uh, this is a fake one, but there is some real news out there that's not like your typical fake news. They're just trying to get a rise out of people, but fake news to me are what it really means, or not fake news. There's this thing called um, Mad Onion, or no, not Mad Onion. Where am I coming up with that? Onion News. I apologize. I'm all over the place. Anyway, the Onion News is they make stories that are so ridiculous, you should know that they're just not real. Me, I actually believe them. So I'm, I'm not saying this is one of those kind of things, but you never know. So I'm not trying to be mean, but it is from a conservative website. So this says, again, um, this, uh, you know, basically, basically this the, uh, theologist um recently claimed that he found proof that God exists in the universe. So that was pretty cool. I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to make a long story because I think Rush kind of probably, for those who actually stuck in there like I did, because I actually chose to play that whole segment, not just a couple minutes, probably kind of drained people a little bit. I want them to absorb what he said. I don't want to take away from that. Anyway, um, another one, it was from the Daily News, a story I found, Thai police launch manhunt for cruel mother who tied up her, um, what is it, uh, Pert file, Peter file, I can't pronounce that word. Folks, maybe you can help me with this, Matt. It's spelled P-E-T-R-I-F-I-E-D, son, um, with a plastic cord as punishment. Um, this woman tied her son to like, to, um, like, looks like a metal railing or something. And just, I guess I assume left him there. The woman was videoed, videoed wrapping thick plastic string around her son. Um, the, I can't, there's that word again, can be heard crying and saying he cannot breathe. Um, police corporal. Uh, you know what? Forget it. So anyway, the shocking incident occurred in a food market. So that's what it's like. It's in a food market. This woman got pissed off at her kid. And, you know, you talk cruelty. That That's really cruelty. She liter- she basically tied the kid down. Like she's she's I, I'm looking at the pictures, like the still shots. She's actually holding him down, you know, with her foot as she's like cattle tied him down a kid in a food market. So, yeah, I don't I don't understand people. And it's just like it seems like everywhere people are just are crazy, but they're they're rather focused on my craziness than the other craziness that um, exists everywhere else else. So anyway, 
Another story I got was from the AmericanFirst.com. Yeah, that's AmericanFirst.com. It was kind of interesting. It says ICE, I guess there's this program trying to uh, capture all these illegals in our country now. So anyway, it says ICE takes down 248 criminals, criminal illegal immigrants hiding in sanctuary cities. 248. That's a lot. Good news, ICE made nearly 250 arrests after a multi-state crackdown, state crackdown, with Sanctuary City. Now get this, Philadelphia, a man targeted of um, target of enforcement and removal operations. Way to go, ICE, is what it says. Prayers for their continued efforts and safety. So, yeah, one of the places targeted was Philadelphia. That's That's like my city. It's everybody's city, but it's my city because I live in Pennsylvania is what I meant. The focus was Philadelphia's so-called sanctuary city that has been refuge in, uh, refusing to completely apologize about that with ICE, demands the city law enforcement detain illegals for arrest. No wonder why my job's been so empty lately. I'm being a bit sarcastic, by the way, there, if you haven't picked up on it. Anyway, it has a quote. I hate reading quotes because you know I'm going to destroy them. In the Philadelphia area, ICE arrest se- uh, several at-large criminal aliens in which the ele- uh, agency had issued detainers, but the city of Philadelphia failed to honor them and released the individuals from custody, a situation that puts the public, which would mean me, at unnecessary risk. So I'm not going to go any further, but yeah, Philadelphia was one of the targeted places where they found a um, crap load of really dangerous, what do you call it, illegals that were uh, left left go because Philadelphia ha- is one of these sanctuary cities that will not abide uh, by you know Trump's law. So hey, way to go! Thank you for endangering my life. That's why so many of us, you know, in the suburbs, at least I know I'm one of them, refuse to actually go in the city because of. You know, this nonsense. You know, you don't think about my safety or anyone else's. All your, the only thing these people are, 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 wor- are concerned about is uh, political correctness. So anyway, that's just ridiculous. That's crazy. New York Post, I found this article. I thought it was pretty entertaining and very stupid at the same time. Oh, God, I wish I had that segment of Hero of the Stupid, because this would actually fit. Spring Break Bro gets bright idea to jump into a shark tank. So they have a video. They actually were stupid enough not only to jump into it, but they were actually dumb enough to actually record it. Yeah, this guy li- like basically jumps into a shark tank, a shark-infested tank um, during the night um, and almost gets attacked by these sharks. I don't blame the sharks. And I feel bad. They'd probably get indigestion from the idiot. So it was a frat kind of joke. They The guy is like shown jumping into. You can watch the video. Um, this is Atlantis Resort. Um, yeah, the guy actually put, you know, posted, I guess, on Instagram of him. Uh, the one guy jumping into the water. Invest it with sharks. Yeah, real smart, dude. Real smart. Um. Yeah, this was kind of entertaining. A friend sent this to me. Cyril Dine in Dasher strikes again in Los Angeles. Here we go again. A Los Angeles pretty boy prep who dates, uh, date claims he dines in Dashes, leaving them with a hefty tab. Like this guy, it's a guy that basically uh, sticks women with the tabs. He, you know, blind date kind of deal. He sets up these, he gets set up with these blind dates and he just sticks to women with the bill after he's done eating. Uh, has struck again in South California, one of his victims said. So it's a punny article. I'm not, again, I'm going to kind of go through these because if I can keep it under an hour, that would be wonderful. So I'm going to leave that for other people to kind of figure out if they want to read it or not. Um, yeah, you know what? Here's one of these news stories that it's like the Onion News, and I did not realize it. I'm like taking this stuff seriously, and like getting like all excited or whatever about it. So here was one story. It was from. Um, it's called. It's basically it's not Onion News, but it's the same idea, and I didn't realize this. 
but it's it's like called Breaking News or something like that. It's on Facebook. Excuse me, it's on Facebook. And again, I'm taking all this stuff like it's like face value. So I feel like more of a dunce than I can actually be. And it's actually embarrassing because there was this story. It said, breaking news, Donna Brazil dies in fiery car crash after admitting she helped Clinton with basically um, exposing Clinton for her um, emails. And I actually like started reading this, and I'm like, oh, my God, is this for real? This woman, Donna Brazil, like actually got killed as like one of these Clinton hits again. And I'm taking it and I'm like looking for articles on it, folks. And then I find out this is a this is one of these fake news, you know, deliberately fake news. It's not trying to it's just basically, you know, like onion news. And I'm taking this stuff seriously all the time. So, um, yeah, I felt like such again, I felt like a total ass. Yeah, it's not that hard. I know. So anyway, it was that. And Daily Tips is a story. I don't think this was fake. Massive bumblebee recall after two employees admit cooking a man and mixing him in a batch of tuna. Um, I thought that happened like a while back, though. So I don't know when this story was posted because I thought I read this a long time ago. But it's on Daily Tips Info, and it does not have a date on this particular thing. It says 2017. So it says on Monday, bumblebee... Foods and two employees were um, charged by Los Angeles prosecutors for violating safety regulations and the death of a worker who was cooked in the industrial oven with tons of tuna. So it had a little meat with your tuna, I guess. Now, that's not cool because you opened that can and, you know, ate that on like, you know, on a Friday. Now that it's Lent right now, that would be not too cool either. So that was a really bad joke. I realize that now. So um, this one was kind of interesting. None of these stories can I openly, honestly say I have not read, but this one kind of just caught my eye. I had it on my webpage, and just you know, I see things that kind of catch my eye. I, I basically just place it there, but then I, most of the time, I want to go back and read them. I never do. Um, this was from AWM American Web Media. Women had this woman has no idea. Camera records her every move. Cop show. The moments later in this video they had recorded from a dash cam. When a driver with a dash cam pulled up to the stoplight, he realized that it was no ordinary stop. The small car had pulled over to the side of the road because a fight had broken out. The female driver had gotten so upset she stopped her car and began to beat another woman. It was all caught on basically on a dash cam. So this woman didn't realize um, yeah, she started a fight and started beating, pounding this other woman in another car. She got out of her car and did this. I, and um, that's what it looks like because I really didn't watch the video either. I could do that. I probably would explain a lot more. I'll do that because I have my sound down. All right. I don't know how long it's going to take because it's a minute and 15 seconds. Okay. Because, yeah, most cars, I think, will eventually come with dash cams or people just get them put in, whatever. You know, have recording devices. Yeah, what I'm looking at, yeah, the woman start, stops the car and gets out and starts beating the other woman in the same car. So I apologize, like literally beating the crap out of her. For what reason? I have no clue. Well, I mean, yeah, she's like really kicking and pounding at her head. So you can watch this if you're interested in nonsense like this. It's definitely entertaining to watch because these are the people probably, I hate to say it, I'm just guesstimating, but probably from the left who are so... Humble as pie and, you know, don't believe in violence. Because, you know, that's a total crock of crap. Anyway, okay, um, it was a story from the Daily Mail. Um, not trying to offend anybody. I've actually posted stuff from the Daily Mail that actually got pulled because um, Facebook found it offensive. Now, you know what, though? They got these, how can I say it? Um, they got these links on Facebook for like inappropriate pictures what women put up of themselves. I mean, inappropriate means that they're like pr- pretty much like basically nude. And they don't have a problem with that. They allow these clubs to go on and stuff. I join them because I enjoy looking at women that are nude because it's the only time I ever see them. But um, I don't even put anything up that offensive. I put up a story from the Daily Mail one time that actually was one posted about nude dating, they didn't show any nudity. It was in the um, Daily Mail news, you know, paper online, whatever. 
And apparently, they didn't have a problem with the Daily Mail having that even on their web page, even though, there were, again, there was no nudity. But they did have a problem with the fact that I basically had, you know, a public newspaper online. They had more of a problem with me reposting it on my Facebook page. So they had taken it down because it was, by me, it was found offensive. Now, I wish I was kind of joking about that, but I'm not even kidding, you know. So it was okay for them to put it up, but it was not okay for me to put up. Not saying anything. Just think of like that 15 minutes of Rush that I played, and maybe it, it may kind of make sense to you then. Um, anyway, yeah, this was kind of funny. It said, would you like this number plate on your car? Incredibly rude. Personalized plates is for, up for sale for 6,000 pounds, you know, 6,000 pounds British money. Um, the number plate with unfortunate registration is basically, um, I'm going to say it, hey, it's, it's internet radio, it doesn't make a difference, but it basically spells it out in a different way, cunt. So cunt is being sold online. Expert predicts lots of interest because of the rude combination is so rare. Normally, DVLA pull cheeky plates, but... This one has slipped through the net. Do you have an unusual number plate? Um, email katie.french at mailonline.co.uk. So this was in UK. Yeah, it's spelled a little bit unique because usually vanity plates are, but it's kind of what it is. You know, a European one for England. So, yeah, and they're selling those. Um, another entertaining story doesn't fit with everything else. What well, whatever does on my show, but again, it was from the Daily Mail, and it's Justin Bieber. Party girl Rose Cook denies claim that singer had picked female bolt party guests like cattle, and dismissed some women as too fat and ugly while the tour in Melbourne. Um, so I thought that was pretty funny. I mean, it's. I thought he kind of calmed down quite a bit, I thought. I was hoping he did, actually. You know, one of these things that um, my friend Matt always picks on me about, well, you you know, when you kind of have that wishful thinking, I forget how he puts it. So it's one of my wishful thinking things that, hey, maybe like these these um, spoiled brats uh, entertainers, you know, are actually kind of grown up a little bit, but unfortunately... No, it's not the case. So uh, it's kind of a disappointment, but it was actually at the same time, it's kind of funny, you know, if that's possible. Um, you know, that obviously um, they have not changed whatsoever, or he has not changed, or most of these people haven't. I mean, heaven forbid, look at uh, Katy Perry. She's like, what, in her mid 20s or late 20s, and she's still. Hasn't learned how to grow, act like a mature adult. Um, obviously, Miley Cyrus wasn't. Um, she doesn't act like a mature adult. Now, it was funny because when I was their age, I can actually say it, and I'm going to act like an old man. But when I was their age and in my 20s, what was I doing? I, I moved home, and that wasn't like a mature thing. But I, the first thing I did was um, I you know, had to get my license. I, I walked everywhere. I lived in my apartment. Everything was close. And I couldn't afford a car. So, you know, you know, my parents said, you can move home, but you're going to get a car. You'll learn how to drive. And you know, it was like, okay, I'll do that. But I'm also, I am going to put myself through college. I don't care if you're going to pay for it or not. That's not that's not your job. It's my job. So I did so. I put myself through community college and a four-year program. And then, you know, I did the next step trying to look for, you know, jobs. Uh, fortunately, um, well, unfortunately, I could not find any decent jobs. So my father was nice enough to help me get a job where I work um, at the present time. Now, the only thing is, though, um, having the college degree did help, even though the job I'm doing doesn't ask for anything more than pretty much, um, what is it? Um, it doesn't need more than like a GED or something like that. It doesn't need any more. It's not like a, it's not rocket science to what I do. Um, so, yeah. So, but the bottom line is it's so many people now that, you know, have college degrees that if you don't even have that, you're not going to even get like your simple, even probably burger fl flipping job. You know, you can complain about, well, this job's only a burger flipping job, but you know what? 
you're not going to even get that with a GED or whatever. You think you would. But, you know, I hate to tell you, I would. well, here we go again. Here's my wishful thinking or my assumption of thinking. But I would think, okay, you're going to try to pick, um, what do you call it, somebody who, um, you know, for a job, you're going to, and, and, and people are so desperate for work, I think that's going to change now that Trump is in. I seriously do. Well, you think that, Walter. Um, no, I actually do. But... People, you know, if I had my choice between a person who, you know, the, hey, you know, you're desperate for a job, and I could get somebody with a college degree, or you know, even though they're not getting paid jack shit, a college degree or a high school diploma, I would probably every time. I hate to tell you, I'll pick the person with the college degree because I hate to tell you, but um, well, you're gonna say, well, they're not gonna last. A person with a high school diploma or GED. They're going to stick in there for the long run. Yeah, but there's there's another problem, too. Generally, the people less educated also act, I hate to say this, but they also act less educated, too. Um, so generally, you're going to go with somebody probably who is willing enough and desperate enough because they, you know, hey, right now I can't get a really good job. Um, they're going to be, you know, more well-spoken, I guess, is one of my reasons for saying this. Um, you know, they'll be well spoken and two, um, you know, they're not gonna, Hey, I got to call out of work. It's the same thing. Like when I worked at a place where somebody actually, you know, um, what is it? A boss hired people that were retired. It's for the same reason I would think. And the reason is because, you know, they're, they, they, ha- they're going to take things more responsibly. Now, you know, yeah, I'm kind of probably going to contradict myself with this because, um, unfortunately, nowadays we we um, we are dealing with way too many, you know, even young adults that are college graduates who actually act like they're still in high school. So we do have that problem, too. But I would take my chances. Probably I put more of a bet on that than um, try to. Assume that somebody that is not a college graduate, you know, a high school person, that they're they're going to be in for the long run. They're they're going to probably even be worse. It's like I hate to tell you because you know this, this is my way of thinking. They're going to probably think, well, hey, you know what? Um, you know, I can I could collect more, which is true, but I'll collect more on like welfare or food stamps anyway. So why should I even make an effort to come to work? You know, once I establish a job, I'll stay there for a couple months and then I'll just you know, basically uh, quit or get laid off or force myself to get fired so I can just, you know, collect. I mean, that's really nasty thing to say, but come on, let's face it. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of true too. So, um, you know, I didn't mean to go off on a a big thing with that, that whole um, spiel of how I think, but I, I kind of think I'm probably on the right page with that one. So, Anyway, um, really cool story because, wow, I already wasted a long time just blabbing on about that. There's a cool story. It's not even let me uh, like it now. I, I put it on my Facebook page, but I mean like giving a head a thumbs up from the writer. America Now, teen uh, returns wallet filled with cash. That was really cool. That was on February 20, 21st. So that was a little bit back. It was like about a month ago. <clears throat> anyway, California team returns lost wallet filled with cash to its original owner who turned out to be a military veteran. So, young kid um, actually returned a wallet, didn't take anything out of it at all. So, hey, I got to give the kid kudos. According to the news, Ossity Tommy O'Connor, a high school senior, was a seven. 7- 11 in uh, was at 7-Elevens in Fairmont, California, buying a soda when he found a wallet on the ground. Much to his surprise, there was $2,300 inside ca- cash inside the wallet. Rather than pocketing the money, O'Connor ran the wallet back to his high school and handed it over to the teacher assistant and returned it to its uh, who, which that person, the teacher, um, returned it to. Um, it's rightful owner. So that was really cool. There's more to it. I just am kind of running slow on time and I got a couple more stories and it's got me down to 10 minutes now. 
So, um, oh, wow, the story is not opening up properly. There was a funny story I saw, and I was hoping to read it. Um, but anyway, it was titled, um, This Sex Doll Will Make You Feel Inadequate uh, in the Sack. You know, like these techno- the technology on these love dolls have gotten so incredibly um perfect or whatever it, it's like this doll will actually make you feel and an, an, even a, a doll because me and my friend matt we make jokes like yeah we we have such bad luck we could even ask out not that we would you could even ask out a little kid and they say hey you know what i'm too busy you know a girl young girl for a date and she'd say you know what um i'm too like howard stern when he asked out a blind woman in uh, private parts and she feels his face and she says yeah i gotta i gotta I'll do some reading tonight a blind girl So that's like with us, like we would have such bad luck that a little kid would say, hey, we're just too busy and you're too immature for me. Um, That's that's my luck, at least. Um, So, yeah, now you can't even take out a love doll without getting rejected. That's really bad. I don't know what the whole story is. I couldn't get it to open up, so I apologize. New York Post, there was a story. It says woman killed celebrating her 21st birthday was severed in half. So I didn't read the story. My friend Todd read it for me. She basically was too tired to drive. You know, she was, I believe, yeah, she was from Brooklyn. So she was in New, New York. Now, here's the thing I don't understand. She had, a, like, a brand new, um, very expensive car, too. And she had two other people driving it. Well, one person driving. Two other people. She was sleeping in the back, and she got killed. Um, Amanda Minor, a Minor was in the back seats. Um of the speeding gray 2013, so it wasn't brand new, Infinity G37, driven by her allegedly drunk NYPD um, tra- uh, PD traffic agent pal when she was thrown from the car onto Brooklyn-bound lanes after the vehicle hit a barrier and a support pillar early Thursday, police said. She was 26 years old. I'm already botched this story up enough, but yeah, she let a drunk friend drive her car, which he ended up um, total in the car and actually helping. He helped get her killed and severed severed in two. So that's what a way to celebrate your 21st birthday. If you you know if you're that tired and your friend is that drunk, didn't you just call Uber or something else? You can find this story on the New York Post. You can find it on my Facebook page, and you can find out more about that. Another story I did not read, and I didn't get anybody else to read it for me because I am illiterate. I'm being sarcastic. I'm just too lazy. Let's face it. Joy Ryder, Ryder accused of running over EMT faces murder charges. So th- this story has been like posted for a couple days this past week. And I never read it yet, so it just the title alone just caught my attention. And we are actually at eight minutes left for the hour, and I want to keep it within this hour. So you know, you can check this out. It's like just look for because I think you don't even have to go to New York Post. This actually became national coverage. This story, but a crazed joy joy rider accused of fatally running over an E D N Y E M T. With her own ambulance, faces faced with uh, faced the wrath, excuse me, of her fellow medics as she was escorted from the Bronx um, precinct house earlier um, on Friday. That's a man, though, but they say her, so it makes no sense. Claiming I'm innocent, I didn't do anything. Okay, here we go. Um. It looks like a Josh Gonzalez or something, Joe, Joe, like Josh or whatever. Twenty five appeared battered and bruised as he was uh, led away by detectives, while dozens of EMTs hurled insults at the sneering, long haired man before dawn at the forty three forty third precinct. Uh, so this is pretty interesting. Well, this man faces different charges because they wrongfully accused the wrong person. Read the story so you can clarify what I am not doing a very good job at. Um, bottom line, this guy, his last name is like some type of Spanish Hispanic name because that's why I'm having a hard time pr- pronouncing it. 
has an extensive rap sheet with arrests dating back um, to 2008. So he's almost got a rap sheet for the past almost 10 years, including for assault, criminal mischief, uh, mischief, mischief, is it mischief or mischief, mischief, marijuana sales in pos- and possession, uh, turnstile jumping, and public lewdness. So this man's got a, 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 a whole plethora for the past nine years at least rap sheet and now he's got something added on to his rap sheet that he now killed an EMT which they try to accuse somebody else of um, one of the other EMTs so again I just really botched that story so look for again just a jury rider accused of running over EMT and you'll probably find it right away on a, a good Google search so anyway, um, let's see. I'm at five minutes left. Women, woman, 19, struck and killed by train door and model and shoot. That was pretty interesting. It's weird because they don't really show the pictures um, on, you know, on the story. But if you go on the Facebook um, and on the news linked page to it, you will see. Oh, I got to update my flash. They show a picture of the woman who actually was model on on I mean I'm not even kidding she's she's like her ass is on um on the um, on the train racks and she's getting pictures I mean that's a little dumb that is very dumb actually and she yeah she got killed while modeling on train tracks I mean it's kind of I mean I don't know how else to put it but you're it's it's stupid and yeah, you're kind of going to have a problem with that. I, th- you know, I hate to tell you, lady, but yeah, it's not a very smart move to try to model on a train rail track. So I, I, I don't know what else to tell her. Uh, she's dumb. How's that? That that that's kind of wraps everything up in a nutshell. I think I only have two more stories left. Thank goodness, because I'm actually down to three minutes or four minutes. I'm going to keep it there. But I saw this story. I told a uh, friend and coworker on Friday about this, and you know, it was like he didn't believe it. It's like you sure it's not one of these, um, you know, onion news stories. I don't think so. The Daily Wire has a thing. What? What? No way. Blah 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 blah. W U T college student explain why milk is racist. So yeah, there's a story. No joke. No joke. So now even milk is racist. So, you know, white milk because probably because of it, that it's white. Anyway, the story does say nothing is sacred anymore. While it does not surprise anyone that the left says white girls cannot wear hooped earrings and that fraternities must admit women in defense to the exception to Title Nine of the Civil Rights Act, nothing can logically explain an opinion piece claiming that milk is racist. Did I read that right? I probably got most of that wrong. Anyway, it says uh, Samantha Diaz, a staff writer for California State University Long Beach Students newspaper, uh, the Daily 49ers wrote an article claiming that white super uh, supremacist supremacist that's a long word and neo nazis are uh, appreciating milk as a symbol of hate here is the hook to the article so i don't know if i really want to read this it's actually going to take the rest of my time practically and i think the other story is really simple to read so it's not even to read just to mention um when you think this is what it says when you think milk um what What's the first thing that comes to your mind? If you're a millennial, you probably think of Strong Bones, Got Milk commercials, or maybe eating your favorite cereal while watching cartoons on Saturday morning. Um, what about racism, white nationalism? If you're having trouble finding the connection between these institutions and milk, you're not alone. You alone with the you along with the rest of the nation have been accustomed to hearing the benefits of milk that you probably didn't even realize um, the subtle racism hidden in our health facts 
And it goes on. Well, the, actually, that's all, all. That's the only thing they actually take from this story. And then it goes on to say more. But yeah, now because milk, like I said, it's white. It is a um, it is a symbolic racist thing. Like if you you know look at milk, it's actually like um, it's racist because it's white. It makes no sense at all. But I'm not making this story up, and it is not an onion story. So, and it even kind of reinstate this in red to make sure that you're, you know, you read this correctly. And it has a the quote that says, you alone, alone, wait, let me read that again. You, along with the rest of the na- nation, have, have been so accustomed to hearing the benefits of milk that you probably didn't realize that subtle racism is hidden in our health facts. So, yes, because milk is white, it is racist. So that is really, I'm, I'm glad you opened my eyes to that stupid opinion of the left. I mean, uh, thank you, the left, for opening my eyes to, I didn't realize that I was drinking something um, that was racist. Not that it was healthy for me, but the actual reason that I drink white milk is because I hate, um, I'm a white supremacist, and I just hate anybody who is not the same as me. That's according to this, what people think on the left from this one, um, especially at this one college that I just shut down the story, and I'm not going to look for it again because I just thought it was just entertaining. Uh, last story, by the way, because I'll just make it. It's actually a little after an hour, so that's perfect. I read the story, and then it was like they said Rowan Atkins over the weekend – um, had gotten killed in a car accident at the age of 58. And I was like, believe in it. So somebody actually wrote in the story that I posted that this is a fake story. This is fake news. So somebody, I did look for it. And it is true. Business2community.com um, basically confirms that it was a fake news story. Rowan Atkins, a.k.a. Mr. Bean, dead from suicide or car accident, is a celebrity death hoax. Because they've been doing that lately, all Lately, all these death hoax. Um, so it was once again, it was another one with Rowan Atkins. So, um, yeah, what is this going to stop with these stupid stories that are fake news? Um, and I believe them, a lot of them. So I'm, I'm very gullible. I'm, I'll admit to that. I know I'm going to end my story, but I just had to kind of fit this in because I saw this um, at the last second. Actually, while I was doing the show tonight. It's from Vox.com, Kong. Kong, yeah, no puns intended. Vox.com. Kong, Skull Island, omits the most important part of Kong's story. Let's list the three big things that uh, this occasionally fun, mostly frustrating monster movie badly misunderstood. Um, Let's see if they have them. Giant monster movie in general, but more specifically King Kong. That was number one. Um, Apopolix Now. Um, and three was pretty much every actor in the movie. I actually enjoyed the film. I thought it was actually really good. I saw that last weekend, and I thought it was very cool. Speaking of which, I was really psyched. I'm going to kind of wean down now on stories that I can just botch up. Last night, I was up until 7.30 because I was fixing my computer, and I ended up erasing everything. I lost everything now on my computer, but it is working right, so that's... Once in a while, you got to kind of flush out your system, so to speak, your computer, and that means erase everything. Now, that's good and bad, but you, see, I had no choice because what I was actually trying to do also, in addition to flushing the system, was I also was trying to, um, you know, basically, um, you know, back everything up from one drive, race to one drive, and then put it back on kind of deal. Did not work. I ended up racing. I have three different hard drives. One's internal. It's flash drive. One and two are external. But I end up erasing entirely everything, so I was left with nothing. Um, but I, I have cloud accounts on some stuff that I tried to save. Um, so not everything is a total loss, but there's a big chunk of it, yeah, that is gone forever and in cyberspace. No, not even cyberspace. I'm sorry, on the hard drives. I mean, there's a way you can recover this stuff. It's just not really easy. Um, God, I, I'm drawing a blank. There was something I was kind of weaned down with. Not not the Kong story. Oh, okay. I was watching TV last night, folks, and it was really cool, actually, because, um, it, you know, I was up already, and I needed something in the background just to kind of, 
you know, kind of dead in the pain of me, um, what do you call it? Um, trying to work on this computer. So I had in the background, I had the sci-fi channel on, and it actually caught most of my attention. So it made it kind of difficult. Where um, on sci-fi, one, they had this movie that was actually really cool. It's like one of these uh, films where they basically just, um, what do you call it? They, um, you know, it's like like a Blair Witch kind of deal. Those movies just never seem to freaking die. For some reason, they never seem to die. So, and some of them are actually really good. Some of them are just kind of like redundant and stupid. I understand. This one actually I really like because what it had in there, and I asked my one friend Rich about it. He says, yeah, that's something they really never put a um, a marketing thing on, like a marketing plug, I guess. And it was Slender Man. So the movie was not called Slender Man, but the premise of the film was actually about Slender Man, the, um, the urban legend. If you ever, I, you know, I'm not really familiar with it, but I've heard the terminology over the years of the urban legend of this thing called Slender Man, some kind of suited up creature that is really tall and lanky and thin and, uh, you know, has no features of a, of a face like it's a blank face. Um, it's something I'm, I'm probably not doing a very good job explaining it. So yeah, there was a movie about these people who stumble upon that the creature Slender Man actually likes to be recorded, at least according to this film. And it's almost like when you say Bloody Mary three times that if you record, um, if you get the recording of Slender Man and you see him. You're pretty much screwed because he will come after you, so and kill you, or at least have you kill each other, or, or possess you, and then kill you that, or kill other people, and and then eventually you that this in this um way. So that was really cool. And generally, I'm not much for these kind of films, and sometimes I am. But this one was especially it was on sci-fi. If I haven't mentioned it, most of those are just really bad. Um, the movies on sci-fi. This one, actually, I really enjoyed, though. I thought it was actually pretty well done for, you know, a cheesy kind of campy movie. Talking about campy movies, I didn't mean to go off about this. This was another one. Um, It was a movie, actually, I I got this thing. It's only $4.99 a month. That's it. For a thing called Shudder. And I asked my friend Matt, hey, have you ever, you know, I'm going to give you my password. You watch it. Tell me which movies you think are really good. And give me some opinions on what I should actually focus on. Because I don't know. Most of the movies on there are really bad. So I picked this movie. It was called Terror Train or whatever. It had this guy who played, this actor who played Moose from Night Court. So most people don't know who that is. Um, I do because, you know, I used to kind of know, watch a little bit of Night Court. Moose was this shaved head guy who played um, a court officer or whatever. And it was kind of really, really kind of funny, kind of. And But he was in this horror movie that the movie was so bad, I told my friend Matt it had one, one uh, song for the whole entire movie. One song was repeatedly played. And um, because it was such a low budget film, it had this horrible claymation for monsters. It had monsters in there. It was three short stories, though. And Terror Train is it's like basically and they took some like theme from, I think, Doctor Who from back in the day where um, I'm trying to think that it was um, like if you ever watched Doctor Who, like when I did back in the old days, there was this thing called. Uh, the black and the white guardian. Well, they had this special kind of themed music and or sound in the background. Well, that was that sound track was like the same one for this freaking movie. And it was like, God, they even stole the track from Doctor Who. It sounded like. I'm not saying they did. I'm just saying it sounded like it. So um, that was entertaining. Um, but yeah, the the one actor who played Moose on um, Night Court. I'm not gonna look up his name. Um, there was three short stories, and he's in all three stories and um it's just and he plays like a a horrific character like somebody who's really violent it's like dude you went from doing comedy for how many years that was on for i think 10 nine years the show to 
you know, playing this really nasty character in this movie that was just god awfully bad. Um, it had my favorite though. It had chicks in spandex and leotards and stuff because it was like an eight, it looked like an eighties film, even though I think it was done in early two thousand. I don't know, but it is a little bit of an old film somehow. Maybe it was a little bit older than what I'm mentioning, but yeah, it was just it was completely like garbage film, but it was entertaining at the same time. So I did that, and that was entertaining, like I said. But then the other thing was, um. What was it? Oh, okay. The other night was the the Slender Man movie last night. That was cool. Whoops. Sorry, I just got to keep my eye on something. But then the other thing that was really kind of interesting was um I'm trying to think right now. Oh, yeah, I was watching cuz I I've never really got into it. I wanted to so badly. Yeah. No, but I did. Um, was X-Files, because it was like back in college, when I was in college, that was like the big thing for a lot of people, uh, was, you know, was X-Files, and there was something else too, X-Files and Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks was actually really big. Um, so, you know, hey, it was like, yeah, you know, that that was the the, the things that made you pop, or like was the thing you were, that made you part of the in crowd of you would um, watch those two kind of shows. May other ones too, but those were the two popular ones because they were kind of like a little off the wall. It might even happen before college that X Files was big because it was on forever. And um, but they, sh- I always remember like they talked about different characters on on um from the X Files, and one of the characters, by the way was um, The Smoking Man. And I, I told my friend Rich today, and I went over his house to drop some stuff off I wanted to give to him, like clothes and stuff I wanted to get rid of. I said, dude, give them to your kids. If they can fit into them, that's great. If they want them, it's theirs. If you don't, just give them to Salvation Army. There's a place called Liberty. And he's like, yeah, I'll do that. I'll see what my kids want. If they don't want anything, they'll just give it away. And I was like, good. I want to give it to people who don't have anything, not to people who have too much and just don't want to see it go to waste. So, um, and I know it's hard. He's got three kids. So, you know, and the clothes, I don't give him clothes that are smelly or disgusting. No, my clothes are in actually really good, decent shape. Um, so yeah. So anyway, yeah, I was mentioned about the smoking, the smoking man. And I think it was called the Marble, 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 Smoking Man, Smoking Man. It was like, yeah, that was that was a big one. And he said there was another character. It's like, yeah, I mean, I've heard about these characters. I didn't hear about the other one he mentioned, and I forget it's the person's name or the character's name. But I was like, watch. It was like, wow. After all these years of hearing about X Files, never really watching it, never buying it, and getting through it. Maybe I will someday. That I actually got to see the Smoking Man, and it was like, wow. After how many years since you know X Files had had been on and was off and it still has a big following uh, of, of people who actually are still interested in the show. Uh, it was the very first time I actually saw it was like a three part episode. I mean, I heard it was on more than that, but the character of the Smoking Man and it was like, wow, I saw the Smoking Man. Now my life is complete because I saw the Smoking Man. So anyway, folks, um, everyone, this is Walter from my Walter. I apologize. I went a little over the hour mark. Hope you liked the rush hour um, 15-minute segment because I thought it was really good. I just hope you agree with me. Um, And everyone, have a good week because I probably won't be on again for the week. If I can, I do try to do one every one a week, but it's, you know, difficult sometimes depending on what's going on. So have a good week. Um, Next time I might be back might be in April. Who knows? I'll see. Um, So have a good one. This is Walter for my Walter. And yes, I am signing off.